regardless of what generation you are in, has been in this unique frame of life. And we don't really have a term for it. Is it being a teenager? Is it being an adolescent? Is it being a young adult? Um, is it being a college student? But don't you go through the same things regardless of your educational experience? So we don't really have a term for this really unique point in our lives. But we've all been there and it's a very rich and difficult experience. And, and there's a lot there um, to discuss. And so we selected this painting um, to talk about tonight, um, not only because of the really rich visuals that we've just sort of started touching on, but also because they provide such a great leaping off point for talking in a really nice, non judgmental way about what it means to be in between adulthood and childhood or in between adolescence and being a full-fledged adult and that moment of transition. I get the sense with her expression that she, she knows what she's about even though there's all these other indications of innocence. Mm -hmm. Her expression, I think, is a contrast to that. What about her expression do you think, like what do you particularly think that her face is indicating? Well, it's very provocative. And defiant. And defiant. Rebellious, provocative. Well, interesting. I don't see it that way at all. Mm -hmm. What do you see? I see an element of fear and mistrust mm. in her face. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm. And uncertainty and a little distaste, almost. Mm. Mm. It's really all about in between this. Her, it's in between these interpretations. You know, it sits between them. It's ambiguous. In yeah. that way, uh, uh -huh. as, as is the the action she is performing. A lot of paintings during the Renaissance of the Virgin Mary at the moment of Annunciation always have her hands um, very conspicuously mm. over her abdomen. Mm. Um, there's also usually a lot of triangles and like subtle shapes in paintings um, in Renaissance art that are supposed to indicate pregnancy, even if it's not obviously. I mean, she's not nine months along. Um, and so that's an interesting tension too. There's not just the sexual component to this painting, but there's also a hint at um, maybe sort of more mature sexuality um, or the idea of conception. Um, that kind of goes along with some of the other sacred elements in the painting that we were talking about that um, a lot of people brought up virginity or that the, the way that her shoes are off. There's a lot of cues to the Madonna. Um, so does anybody have any thoughts about how that might relate to this idea of being in between? Her hair kind of implies an innocence because it's not, it looks to me like there might be a ponytail back there somewhere. And just a, a headband is usually yeah. younger girls it's wear headbands. Very girlish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very girlish. Mm -hmm. Good point. I get the reference to the headband though. I keep thinking of um, Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's okay. a good reference. The direction of her gaze reminds me too of some, mm -hmm. uh, especially Madonna images in, in Renaissance art. There's that sort of gazing, not just to her right, but from where I'm sitting, it looks like she's gazing a little bit up um, mm -hmm. as well at someone perhaps standing or someone. Well, the, the symbolism on that throw, mm -hmm. um, there are so many, I guess I'll start and other people can keep, keep, uh, keep it up. Certainly there's imagery of breasts, or so it seems to me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really see very much, well there are a few things that look rather phallic, mm -hmm. and then the, even the, the three dimension of the shells, it just looks so uncomfortable. You know, most, mm -hmm. most throws would have a smoother, surface and the fact that this has things that are not conducive to comfort yeah. mm -hmm. uh, imply a, a level of discomfort for yeah. the young woman. Yeah. It makes me think that um, this is a home of a higher income or maybe more intellectual, so whatever is happening on the couch, it seems a added scandal. Because I mean, isn't it interesting that we've got two quilts in two very different styles that seem to represent such different cultures and parts of the world? Where in, in, both, in both of those, um, that that's suggests a kind of dichotomy between the different definitions we might have for when somebody's an adult and when somebody's a child and what behaviors are acceptable or expected. Um, 
So it's a nice reminder that not only are individuals maybe in transition or even spaces, but also cultures and different parts of the world and that um, this stage in life would be considered very differently depending on where you are. In the United States, a girl that age is still a girl and mm -hmm. she's still in the process of maturing and growing into her role. But in so many countries in the world, particularly say in Africa, by the time she's that age, she'd be a mother of two children. Right, there yeah. should be babies all over yeah. the place. Yeah, that's, a, a, that's a good observation. Yeah. To me, it's like these worlds are coming together and some of these lines are being less I mean, you're talking about children in Africa at 12 being married off. Well, I mean, my daughter went to Red Bank, and when she was, you know, 15, she was one of three girls, she said, that hadn't had sex in her class. Yeah. So, you know, it was not unusual to go to high school games and see multiple young girls there with their babies on their laps. I think on the one hand, she is in, has stepped into this adult world, if even for a moment and now does look, as the gentleman over here said, very alone, but the way her knees are pulled together, her ankles are pulled apart, that's very much a young girl's um, pose. And to me, it only, for me, it evokes a sense of sadness for her that she's maybe stepped into a world that she wasn't quite ready for. Now that's a pose that we see really commonly right now in high fashion modeling, and it's actually pretty, familiar to see adult women posing in that way, but that's not always been a trend in high fashion modeling. I mean, in the 90s, you get all of these teenage girls who wanted to look like they're in their 30s, and there's a lot of, like, a lot more confident poses in fashion modeling, and now you've got all of these 30-year-old women trying to look like they're 14, and they're all standing like, like they're just so embarrassed um, and trying to cover themselves up, you know, with really expensive clothes on. <laughs> Um, which is an interesting contradiction in and of itself, and yet there's been so many think pieces written on these modeling trends, and especially that pigeon-toed stance that seems so insecure, mm -hmm. and how it's very infantilizing to these adult models. I mean, this is disturbing because you're disturbed for the girl, mm -hmm. but those ads are disturbing because it's disturbing for the culture, I think, right. to say that women are not as strong as they thought they were, that in fact they are only appealing if they are in a state of uh, um, exposure, being preyed upon, or yeah. ready to be preyed upon. I mean, I think those. Once you brought that up, it just flooded my mind with all these images that I've seen that I've been repulsed by. Right. Um, which I don't didn't think of in this same context. But you're right. It's always. It's one thing to be an adolescent. It's something else to be a 30-year-old woman pretending to be an adolescent, pretending to be lost, simulating uh, innocence. So this is pre-selfie, pre-sexting, pre, pre, -sexting, pre uh, any of that. Um, and yet, despite being free of all of those sort of external pressures, we still see um, kind of a preview of a view of young, vulnerable womanhood that has, I mean, become disturbingly familiar to us. Um, so what does that say about where we're in, tra in transition culturally, too? Because if we think about the year that this painting was created, it was 1999. Um, the big things that happened in the 90s for women, we had, um, we had riot girls, um, very pro-feminist movements coming out of Seattle. Uh, we had Monica Lewinsky. Um, Clinton era. The whole Clinton era, um, which had its own dichotomy of the virgin and the whore and the wife and the, the lover. Or whatever. Right. Um, and so that had its own, there was a, and even with the riot girl movement in the 1990s, um, the fashion of that era really emphasized adult women wearing like little girl baby doll dresses and smeared lipstick and chip fingernail polish and you know, there was a um, Courtney Love her style was called Kinder Whore, and that's what everybody actually called it. Kinder um, Whore, that's just very disturbing. Yeah, that was what her fashion style was called. It was all these little girl dresses and like messy hair and smeared makeup. And then she was singing all these feminist rock anthems um, that were kind of a takedown of celebrity and modeling culture. Um, and so thinking about the era in which this painting was created coming off of these really interesting conversations about what it meant to be a woman, um, and playing with these ideas of the adult versus the child in fashion. 
And then also thinking about this painting in the context of what we know has happened since it was created um, with social media and these kind of digital narratives. Um, it's very interesting the painting kind of becomes a transition point in and of itself between two approaches to young womanhood. Well, I didn't feel comfortable looking at this picture the first time I saw it, yeah. and now I'm quite disturbed looking yeah. at it. <laughs> I know, like everybody's got the heat well jeans, right? Okay, cool. So that's our big takeaway, is that um, that transition from adolescence to adulthood is fraught with creepy feelings. Um. <laughs> Potential peril. Potential, Potential peril. peril. <laughs> and and a dangerous time.